Uh, welcome to DC Conversations. Thanks for agreeing to talking to us. Um, so first My of pleasure. all, uh, tell me what is this uh, intervention radiology all about? Well, I think uh, it's a very good question. So intervention radiology is a field that started off in uh, 1967, actually. Mm. It's one of the uh, um, hidden specialities of modern medicine. Um, so if you know what an angioplasty is, like where in the heart today we routinely go and open up heart blocks, where we put in a balloon and open the heart blocks. Mm. So the first angioplasty was actually done by an interventional radiologist named uh, Dr. Daughter in 1967. So uh, basically, uh, interventional radiology is the parent branch that... Um, um, came up with the concept of intra-arterial and intravenous therapies. And later on, of course, um, heart went on to cardiologists and uh, uh, brain is today done by neurointerventionists. They're also uh, specifically trained uh, in uh, brain interventions. And what I do is body interventions where uh, mm. the body except the heart and the brain. So we deal with uh, the entire spectrum of diseases that can be treated with uh, either uh, intravascular approach which is going through the blood vessels to treat different diseases and also there's another um, spectrum of interventional radiology procedures called percutaneous which is image guided treatments so mm. any treat that can uh, that uses modern imaging and can avoid surgery uh, so um, that is done by uh, predominantly interventional radiologists today and uh, what is this genicular artery embolization and how does it work to relieve knee pain? Genicular artery embolization is uh, one of the emerging procedures in treating uh, knee pain. Uh, the first um, the first subset of research initially came out in 2017 from uh, uh, Japan um, by Dr. Akuno, who is the pioneer in this uh, treatment. So he did a sub he did a treatment of 72 patients where uh, using a pinhole we access the uh, blood vessel going to the knee and specifically we target certain abnormal blood vessels that develop in patients with uh, knee osteoarthritis right so when there is uh, knee osteoarthritis and degeneration there are some uh, small uh, abnormal arteries that develop which are continuously supplying um, inflammatory substances like something that causes pain in the knee so yeah. he was able to go in abnormal blood vessels and he used a very nominal, very minimal uh, amount of temporary blocking agent to block these abnormal blood vessels. So, and what they noticed is uh, in 80% of the patients that he treated, uh, there was significant like pain relief at uh, three years. So uh, these patients had uh, 60 to 70% re uh, reduction in the pain that they had before the procedure. So that's how this... Uh, whole uh, concept of genicular artery embolization came in and today uh, almost um, it's been eight nine years and we have done significant research in the field uh, throughout the western world and uh, in india as well where we are seeing very good response in patients with uh, knee uh, osteoarthritis um, when we use this procedure and the main advantage of genicular artery embolization versus other treatments that are available for knee pain today is that there is a lasting relief where uh, we are seeing relief beyond two years and sometimes three and four years. So mm -hmm. today there is no therapy that can actually uh, give you that kind of a response in knee pain. Um, predominantly, the most common things that people use today are like intra-articular knee injections of steroids or um, uh, they give you um, um, pain medications. Um, but these tend to and there's something called genicular nerve ablation. At the most, these tend to work anywhere between three to uh, three months to a year. Whereas mm -hmm. in genicular uh, artery embolization, we are seeing that a, a, a good population of the patients being treated actually have pain response beyond two years and sometimes up to four years and beyond. Is there a is there an age group to which this is this procedure is restricted, or even the seniors could uh, receive this treatment? Uh, age group uh, restriction the best part about this procedure is that uh, it's minimally invasive so there is no surgeries there is it's just a pinhole uh, there is no anesthesia involved so traditionally uh, in the older age group you see that the biggest risk is the risk of anesthesia or infection so yeah. it, and it, 
case, uh, because it's just a pinhole, uh, as small as a, an injection hole, uh, so there's really no um, uh, infection or anesthesia complication. So any age group can undergo this procedure. Yeah, and, and it's benefits, and it, it uh, most benefits uh, people uh, who are in the old age group because they are not very good candidates for surgery uh, or other treatments. Yeah. The duration of this uh, procedure and how much does it cost? Duration is about forty-five minutes. Okay. One hour. Do some. Uh, we use some advanced imaging. Um, um, where uh, we get a 3D, 3D imaging of the blood vessels of the knee. And then once we get that advanced imaging, we go and then select the vessels that are abnormal. And we only put that, um, uh, put that blocking agent in that uh, abnormal vessels. So all this process can take about 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, it's absolutely painless. There's just a small uh, local anesthesia that uh, we'll give you before starting the procedure. And after that, the patient generally doesn't feel a thing. Uh, sometimes, yes, a little bit of warmth in the leg when we're doing the procedure, but apart from that, it's absolutely painless. The patient can go back um, home maybe in three hours to uh, eight hours after the procedure, and they can go back to their normal activities the same day itself. Great. And what's the cost like uh, for this kind of procedure? The cost can be around uh, one lakh for uh, one leg and then um, around 1.25 to uh, 1.5 for two legs. It's basically there are some... Um, each patient can have dif differing requirements so that's why we keep a cost range based on the particular patient yeah are there any potential risk factors associated with this in terms of side effects or is this procedure safe any procedure that we access the blood vessels uh, we go through the blood vessels yes there's a small uh, very nominal chance of uh, a, a, a bleed where we access the patient uh, in the groin but this is now well controlled. We've been doing this for a long time. We know how to control that. And we really don't. It's a very, very rare incidence that we see that. Apart from that, um, there some patients can expect some skin discoloration around the knee. Uh, mm. About 2 to 4% of the patients can expect some skin discoloration, which generally is uh, self-limiting. Uh, there's, there's no treatment required for it. It yeah. goes off in a week or, uh, week or 10 days. Um, and very rarely, we do see some uh, nerve-related uh, uh, complications where there can be some uh, tingling sensation uh, in the foot or uh, those kind of uh, things. But they are also self-limiting. So, uh, and it's extremely rare. It's less than 0.5% uh, that that can happen. And even when it happens, it is it just lasts for a couple of weeks or a month, and then it, it goes off it on its own. Yeah. But apart from that, there are no real serious side effects from this procedure. Um, yeah. Often, uh, I mean, if if this the procedure, the benefits of this procedure probably last for two years or three. After that, I mean, how often can one uh, do this? Is it safe to do this? Because if there is a recurring pain after that, if there's a relapse of knee pain or something like that. Yeah. So this uh, generally, like I said, up to uh, a good population of patients, about fifty to. 50% and more can gain get pain relief for more than uh, three to four years. Mm. Um, so if at all the pain recurs, then well, some patients can undergo a repeat procedure. Mm. And uh, or also there are other, um, you know, um, they, they, they might go on to other uh, pain um, treatments for the knee, like genicular nerve ablation or uh, any intra-articular injections. So um, one thing that we do have to stress is that uh, regular uh, artery embolization is not a is not a replacement for uh, total knee replacement. It's not really something that um, we compare with knee replacement. It is a treatment that we offer to patients who want to postpone, for example, their knee surgery for whatever reason, yes. or, uh, or too too frail, or um, they're um, um, they're not fit to undergo surgery. Um, or uh, sometimes in young patients, for example, who undergo knee surgery, the chances of re -sur revision surgery in the future is higher. So for these mm. kind of young patients also, we can offer this uh, to delay their surgery for a few years. But um, today, even today, the gold standard for, of course, knee, uh, knee, uh, knee osteoarthritis is knee, knee replacement surgery. And uh, this knee, uh, genital artery embolization fits into a spectrum of care for the patients, like I said, that I just described. Yeah.
what are the benefits when you're comparing this uh, uh, you know with uh, knee replacement surgery for example knee, knee replacement uh, is a major surgery they have to undergo anesthesia and some and many patients take up to a year to completely recover from uh, mm. knee surgery and also uh, about 10 to 20% of the patients are not satisfied based on research with the outcomes of their knee surgery and uh, the same amount of patients also have some amount, some pain after knee surgery so um it is about a, it's a personal choice um like i said knee replacement is the gold standard but if a patient for whatever reason does not want that now either they're too old or unfit for surgery or uh, um they want to put off surgery for a few years because they cannot afford to be uh, you know they cannot afford to take that break away from uh, their uh, normal life to recover from this procedure um or for some patients who just want to avoid surgery um this yeah. can it's an alternative option uh, in the in the short term in, in the medium term like it's 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 more an, a medium term response and sometimes up to like i said 3 to 4 years it gives them that window of uh, time period where they can um, delay surgery yeah but the success rate is uh, almost i mean always 100% success rate uh, see uh, we have to uh, think of this treatment in the context of current tre- uh, tre- op- treatment options for knee pain um, right now if you actually look at research and uh, uh, you can talk to orthopedic colleagues as well there is no real uh, 100 uh, you know 100% solution for knee pain apart mm. from knee re- apart from knee, re- knee replacement so yeah you always have to compare this treatment in the context of other c- competing therapies for knee pain so right now the best knee pain treatment will probably give you like uh, like for example you get an intra arterial uh, sorry uh, sorry intra intra uh, articular a uh, corticosteroid injection it can work from 3 to 6 months or you get a genicular nerve ablation it can work from 6 months to a year and a half so um, all these treatments are quite limited and and only 60 to 70% of those patients actually uh, sometimes uh, you know benefit from uh, those treatments so in the context of these competing treatments what genicular uh, artery embolization is offering is actually a much better uh, much better outcomes and for longer lasting uh, time period so um, like i said there is no 100% uh, solution for knee pain it is uh, it is a challenging tre- um, condition to treat and um, to, to- total uh, knee replacement is the only thing I, only our treatment where you can at least get 80 to 90% success rate for these patients and also another important point to notice like for patients who have undergone uh, knee replacement some 10 to 20% of them have pain after the procedure as well and uh, research is uh, showing that these patients also really uh, research in our experience shows that these patients really also benefit from genicular uh, artery embolization so uh, even patients underwent surgery can actually get this procedure if they have some um, if they have some uh, recurring pain after surgery for those uh, you know who see that it is helping them you think they can avoid uh, surgery altogether unfortunately we are not at that time point in the uh, in the co- in, uh, research is not gone uh, beyond 5 years or 4 years to look at that kind of uh, outcomes yet so mm-hmm. i cannot promise that uh, it is a permanent no it is definitely not a permanent uh, solution um, mm-hmm. they w- you can offset like i said especially um, knee, knee surgery but there are many patients who don't want to undergo the surgery right away like that's yeah. quite common with in a practice for whatever reasons personal or uh, professional um, or or the, it or just not the right time in their lives and this is definitely for those patients and for patients who are 80 years and above or 75 years and above who cannot undergo surgery for what for uh, for reasons of fitness you need to this is a major surgery so they are also excellent uh, candidates for this but no it's not a permanent solution no procedure is covered by insurance or it has to be a cash payment right now corporate insurances do cover the uh, uh, procedure uh, okay. but some ins- uh, but some insurances do um, um we find some challenges with some of the insurances uh, to um, cover it so yes maybe uh, it's maybe a 50 50 uh, break between cash pay and insurance is what we are seeing in our practice there are enough um, hospitals in hyderabad that actually uh, does this procedure yeah yes there are a, lo- a lot of hospitals that are offering this procedure 
what kind of trends are you seeing in terms of uh, you know um, in in terms of uh, osteoporosis or oste osteoarthritis what kind of anything new that uh, uh, people are coming up with like in terms of uh, complaints not really i mean um, it's uh, you no know, we don't see any uh, newer uh, um in terms of presenting complaints we don't see anything new this has been there it's a long uh, it's a problem they've been been treating from a long time yes yeah. and so new treatments um yeah so the genicular artery embolization and genicular nerve ablation are two two uh, good options that uh, you know uh, patients have been offered from a, for a while now and uh, we are seeing some promising outcomes and some long term results yeah so these are the two new things of course there are a lot of uh, other researches that are going on in terms of how to modify um the progression of knee osteoarthritis using um, um certain um drugs and uh, so that is something that uh, i think the entire medical community is looking forward to because most of these conditions uh, i mean as of now there is no research that uh, whatever we we can only stop pain but we are not able to uh, stop the progression of uh, knee osteoarthritis so that would be something that is quite exciting to look at in the near future to find some uh, disease modifying uh, drugs that can you know probably stop progression yeah you know if you were to uh, uh, you know think of probably a decade ago or something osteoarthritis was almost unheard of or probably a rare occurrence but now uh, do do you think it's become way too common like every other person is complaining of this what do you think is the reason uh, for this is it because of lifestyle or what is it so um one of the most common causes uh, for uh, knee osteoarthritis it is more common in patient in people with uh, obesity where the bmi is higher than 30 30 uh, and also uh, modern uh, lifestyle and food where we are more sedentary and uh, where um, we have a lot of inflammatory food um Uh, so inflammation is one of the main uh, you know propagators of uh, knee osteoarthritis so our food has become quite inflammatory uh, in the recent times and uh, so that's something that uh, is uh, definitely uh, causing an increased surge in uh, the uh, the occurrence of knee osteoarthritis and um, also um, generally patients with knee osteoarthritis uh, because of their sedentary lifestyle also are are prone to other cardiovascular conditions mm. um so so um this is uh, it's it comes in the spectrum um you know that is related to obesity and sedentary lifestyles so definitely the first and foremost uh, uh treatment for anybody with knee osteoarthritis is a lifestyle modification um mm. diet and uh, exercise and uh, physiotherapy um strengthening the leg muscles um this is uh, something that uh, we do counsel our patients with uh, and, and it is uh, it is also shown to that is the most one of the most effective treatments is uh, physiotherapy and lifestyle modification and for patients who of course are uh, don't uh, are not able to get the results then uh, these options are all available for pain reduction thank you doctor thank you so much for talking to us thank you